You are here because you have heard the call. You are here because you are discerning God's calling upon your life. It may be that you have heard God's voice and it was an audible voice, a very clear voice. It may be that you have felt a nudging of the spirit but just not quite sure how to interpret what it is that you're feeling and what you're hearing. It might be that the faith community has identified something in you and has called out to you to encourage you to walk into your call. No matter the reason for how you got here, the mere fact that you are here is a very important step. It is a step of faith. It is a step of courage. We are all on a journey. God's spirit is always calling. And it is our task to be able to discern what doth saith the Lord. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, or in a woman's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen. Let me say that again. Many are the plans in a man's or a woman's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Responding to the call is wanting what God wants for our lives. We all have dreams. We all have goals and plans and desires in life. But the question is, what does God have for you to do? And trust me, what God has for you to do, it is for you to do. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. The journey of faith for every baptized believer is to discern and to respond to the call that God has on our life. What is God asking of us? What does God want for us? What is it that God is calling us from? What is it that God is calling us to? Sometimes the call is immediate. You hear the call, you're in the position and you're ready to respond to the call, and you move and you act. I think about Larry. When I was serving as a district superintendent, one evening, I got a phone call from the chair of the staff parish committee of a local church. And it was from a gentleman by the name of Larry. Larry was in his early 50s, and he said, Superintendent, I'm calling you because I just don't know what to do. Oh and there was this sense of urgency in his voice, and I'm thinking there was a matter in the congregation that something had happened. I said, well, say more. He said, there's something I need to do, but I don't know what to do with this. I said, Larry, help me understand what is the this. <laughs> He says, I've been praying and I've been talking to my wife about it. I even talked to my pastor, but I'm not, just, I'm not sure what step I ought to take. I said, Larry, talk to me about what this is. There was this sense of urgency. He said, the call of God is so heavy on me. And he says, I am just so ready to just drop everything that I'm doing to take this step of faith. And I said, okay, let's, let's, let's have a little bit more conversation. I said, say more. He said, I've been discerning this for some time. He said, I've been working on the sales car lot for many a years. And my wife and I, we are ready to leave all of this behind. He said, and I just don't know what to do with this. I said, have you talked to your pastor? He said, I've talked to my pastor. I said, what did your pastor say? She said, follow my heart, follow the call. I said, have you met with the staff parish committee? He's the chair of the staff parish committee. <laughs> he said, we've already gone through all of the questions. He said, I am ready to take that step. I said, I need a letter from you. I want to bring you before the district committee on ministry so that we can sit down with you and get you started in your candidacy process. The call was immediate, so much so that he was so ready just to drop everything because he sensed the urgency. Yeah. He started seminary that fall at Garrett Seminary. To this day, 
Larry, in his late 50s, is an elder in the United Methodist Church, an effective, fruitful clergy member of the Northern Illinois Conference. It started with that urgency, that sense of call, but also a sense of readiness that he knew deep down in his soul. And he knew that there was a great risk in stepping forward. But he stepped forward in faith, believing that God would make the necessary provision. Because if God gives the vision, God will make necessary the provision for you to fully live into your call. Sometimes the call is immediate, but also sometimes the call is progressive. Uh Uh-huh, progressive. The call is there, but not yet or not now, or there's more preparation for you to get ready to take this big leap, but yet the call is still there. I have discovered in life and in ministry that whether the call is immediate or whether the call is progressive, that God is working every relationship, every experience, every setback, every setup for him to do what he wants to do through your life. All things are working together for God's good, for God's greater purposes for your life. Do you believe that today? Every experience you have had to this point has not been in vain. It has been for a purpose even every disappointment you may have faced. Every twist, every turn, every step you have taken up to this point, God is one who can use every part of you in every part of your path, the good and the bad, the strong and the frail. God can use every part of you in every part of your life for his greater purposes. God is always working all things for the good. I am reminded of these words from Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah son of Hilkiah, one of the priests of Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah son of Ammon king of Judah. And through the region of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, listen to it, down through the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. Hear these words. Through these different circumstances, through these different people, through these different relationships, the call has come to Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever it is that I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand (laughs) and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me and said, what do you see, Jeremiah? He says, I see the branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. 
When God places God's call upon your life, no matter what your fears are, no matter what your anxieties are, no matter what the uncertainties are, we serve a God that can receive and who understands and is prepared to equip you with every good work Amen. for his greater purposes. Amen. Don't we know that there's a lot of uncertainty, not just to the called life, but to the faith life? All right. Amen. We don't know what's around the corner. Come on. Come on. We don't know what is ahead. Yeah. But one thing we do know is that God's promise is sure, yes. that he will not leave you nor forsake you, that he will put the words in your mouth, that he will give you the power and authority and the anointing that you need in order to do what he is calling you to do. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said, I'm young. I can imagine. Who's going to listen to me? Or the word might be, I don't have as much experience. Mm -hmm. Or I'm second career. I don't have this skill or that skill. But what God says is, if I have called you and purposed you, I will position you to do my good works. Yes. But we have to be willing to respond. All right, God. Jeremiah said, ah, oh, Lord, what is it that you want from me? There was a willingness to hear the call, but he was not afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid and don't be too arrogant to ask questions that you might need answered. God can handle the questions. Don't be afraid to say what you lack and or for what you need. Our God is able. able. Our God is able. And God uses whom God chooses. But we have to have an openness to listen to the voice of God and a readiness to respond, being available for the purposes of God. For it's not about what we want. Because when you say yes to God, you say a yes to what God wants. Amen? And don't we know that what God wants for us, we are not always wanting what God wants. I have been in places and served in places and experienced some things that I never imagined. If it was up to me, I would have never walked into it. If it was up to me, I would have not had the experience. But thanks be to God that God's greater purposes have all, has always been what my desire has been. Yes. Lord, I want what you want for my life. For it's not about me, but it's all about you. Yeah. Yeah. What is your desire? That's what the call, responding to the call is wanting what God wants. And it's steady. It's not stagnant. It's steady. Ever walking toward and into what God wants. You don't have to have it all figured out, my friends. It's only natural to be apprehensive. There are many unknowns and uncertainties. I'm a living witness. Some of you know my story and some of you don't. And I won't stand here to give you the whole story. But one thing I will share with you is that I discern early in life, in my teenage years, that there was a calling on my life. And it wasn't popular among my friends. Even when I went to college, it wasn't popular. And I couldn't even fully articulate it. But I just knew that I wanted to give my life in full service to the Lord. I had no clue what it would look like. I didn't know if I would be a missionary. Didn't imagine myself being a preacher. Honestly speaking, I, I, I never was comfortable standing in front of crowds. 
when I entered into college and then through seminary, it became more clearer for me that God was calling me to shepherd God's people, that God was calling me to preach, and that I realized that even the things that I thought I wasn't equipped to do or things that I didn't think I'd be able to handle, the Lord made provision. I had somebody say to me one day when I share with them how nervous I get when I stand before God's people. They say, oh, you'll grow into it. One day you'll get over that. I said, I pray that I never get over being nervous when I stand before God's people. Because I realize that it's a sacred task and a sacred responsibility. And it's not about me that it is about God. And realizing that I am just merely a vessel who said, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. So, Lord, please keep me nervous. Lord, please keep me uncomfortable. So that I will always have total reliance upon you. And not just on my experience and my gifts and my skills and my education. This is God's work, my friends. And God is calling you to his work. And my prayer is, if you don't hear anything else, that you will hear this. That whoever you are, and however God is continuing to form you, because we're always in process of becoming more Christ-like, more servant-like, more like God. That God is working you into God's great work for his greater purposes. And if he has called you, he will position you and purpose you for his good work. I need you to hear that today. Whatever your doubts are, whatever your fears might be, Whatever your intrepidations or uncertainties, it's okay. (laughs) It really is. God can handle that. But if you just say, yes, here I am, Lord, send me, God will touch your lips. God will perfect your heart. God will anoint your mind. God will prepare and continue to form your spirit so that God can use you for God's greater purposes. To God be the glory for who God is, for what God is doing, and even for that which is yet to come. Take the step, that faith step, that next step, that courageous step. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen. Amen. Amen.